Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. As that well-known quote says, with great heights comes great vertigo, or something like that. Anyway, in this sketch, we'll talk about vertigo, both its central and peripheral causes, and get a few hints on how to evaluate it. Diaper boot here is an underwater creature, totally at home, living well below sea level. So finding himself at the top of this very tall and slender tree is not exactly his cup of tea. And by the looks of Dr. Brian, it's not his cup of tea either. In fact, Diaper Boot might be experiencing a little vertigo, which occurs when a person perceives a sense of motion, usually a spinning or whirling sensation, sometimes accompanied by dizziness or a loss of balance, even though they are not actually moving. This means that this false sense of movement is internal and subjective, and often caused by vestibular dysfunction, which is responsible for maintaining balance and spatial orientation. The causes of vertigo can be split into two categories, peripheral and central vertigo. And we split this sketch into the peripheral tree area to represent peripheral vertigo, and this central tree area for central vertigo. Peripheral vertigo is the most common kind, and it involves the peripheral vestibular system, which includes the inner ear that's connected to cranial nerve 8, also known as the vestibular nerve, represented by this snake curled into the shape of an 8 in the branches of this peripheral tree. 